heart enough. <laughs> so if you have cried already, very good. But I have cried a lot of times. I was a cry baby. When I started Yusana seven years ago, every small thing I cried. Really. People reject me, I uh, very sad, uh, very cry. My downline joined me in the business, after a few weeks I cannot contact them, ignore me while I cry. Yeah. Right? But as you, as you really get through it, Yusana is a love-hate relationship. You will begin to love it through the cries and the tears. So you've got to be able to sacrifice. And some people, I'm not sure for you guys, how many of okay, how many of you here you are doing Yusana full time? Higher, higher, full time, huh? Okay, about 40%. So for those who are doing the business part-time, I can only think of one main reason that you cannot let go of a job is that you are highly paid. Am I right? No. Uh. No? Not really. Then why are you not doing full time? Scared. Very scared, right? So you see, that's the main problem. A lot of people they say, I want to succeed in USANA. But I come in, I try try. I tell you, you try try, uh, you will get try try result. Uh. Really? If you try try, then sometimes you try 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 try, finish game over. Okay, so the difference here, that's why I say the only reason you are not doing USANA full time can only be because you are highly paid and you're, you can't let go of a job because it's too risky. If you are currently lowly paid, I suggest you to quit your job and do it full time. <laughs> because it's not worth your time, right? If you still wait and wait and wait until the day your pay is gonna increase, I'd rather you, it's not gonna, I'd rather you, in, 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 in Singapore, we have this uh, dialect, we say chong. Uh. Chong means like you really run and you dash and you fly. I say, if you have, one year to be stuck in a lowly paid job, why not you just take one year of risk uh, and just strong and really dash forward for your son? Uh? Just use one year to give your best. Give your best, uh, you know. What, you know what is give your best? Uh? Give your best. Yes, you are give your best. <laughs> give your best uh, is that you can work until you're tired but you don't sleep. Then you really, really, you give your best. Some Okay, I come from a background of uh, auditing. I was in KPMG. We have nights where we give our best, okay? We work until very late. We work until 3 a.m., 4 a.m. I give my best. But my boss don't give me his best. My pay is the same, right? So imagine if you use the same kind of hours that you are investing in your job. In USANA, I tell you, you will get a lot more. So sacrifice, and also take some risk. In life, no risk, no pay. Eh? You need to be able to take some kind of risk. When I started Yusana, I was 25. I went to a convention in Sydney. I was working in KPMG. My pay was about 4,500 uh, $4, dollars per month. Very, very comfortable for a 25 year old. Single, no house, nothing, no commitment, no liability. On the plane, I was, I was so inspired in Sydney's convention. On the plane, I wrote my letter of resignation. <laughs> and then, because my mom has been in business for a while, so I thought that she would be excited that I'm going to join her in USANA full time. And she looked at me, she said, what are you writing? Your resignation letter? I said, yeah, I'm going to resign. And she said, uh, do you want to think twice? Think about it. Because she knows that I'm the kind of person that I am very, how should I say, always jump from ideas to ideas, so she's afraid that I'm just excited for the moment because of convention. But I told her, I said, I'm going to give Yusana five years. Not one year, okay? I told her five years. I said my goal is very simple. I give it five years from 25 to 30 years old. By the time I reach 30 years old, right, I want to get paid a passive income of 10,000 SGD every month. If I get that, I hit my goal, I will continue. If I don't hit my goal, at 30 years old, I will go back and find a job. Because anyway, my degree is there. Whatever your degree you have, your degree is there. Your degree will not run away. That paper is in your house. Okay? If nobody can stay away from you. So you don't work in the job now, or you work later, it's going to be the same. Maybe just a few hundred dollars difference because of two or, two or five years of experience difference, right? So I told myself, let's do it. 
So of course, of course now my goals are passed a, a lot higher. But I thought to myself, if at that stage, I was also having a try-try mindset, I will not be here with you today. Because I'll probably still be in KPMG working OT on a Friday night. I won't be, I won't be here. So I'm, I'm glad that you know, I understood that I'm going to take some risk and I'm going to do a bit of sacrifices to get to where I want. So I hope that you guys, if you are still in a mindset of like scared, you know, I don't know what you're scared of, you know. Like remember what I say, the only reason why you're not doing your sana full time is only because your pay is too high to quit. If your pay is just, then quit huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, just quit and, and really work hard for your sana. Your sana is the business that can give you all the things you want, health, wealth, freedom, legacy. But your job can give you maybe wealth, no, not wealth, maybe give you a bit of money. But can your job give you health? No. Freedom? No way. Legacy? No. Nothing. Right? So think about what are you really, really working hard for on a daily basis. So, mindset. Second thing is that a lot of people, right, when they start doing your sana, right, they have a mindset of their own. I'm not sure how many of you experience this. I'm sure most of you experience this when you have a new teammate or it could be yourself uh, that you think a bit too highly of yourself because I was like that. When I first joined the Sana business, I was very proud because I come, I come from a very good university, I have, a, I have a degree and then I have a very great job. So I thought that I knew, I know it all. I thought I'm very, very smart. So I come in, I don't want to follow the method that was being taught to me. I want to create my new things. So I tell you, this is doomed failure. There's a reason why your mentors are succeeding in this business. And if they're willing to share with you, to guide you, the best bet that you can get is to spend time with them and to listen to them. So it's really, really very important. If you want to have success in the business, right, don't be proud and don't have your own mindset. We always say, you know, in my team, right, I tell you, it's very funny. The people who succeed are not the ones who are smart and Eventually, the people who succeed are those people who just say yes up line. You ask me to go left, okay, I go left. You ask me to go right, I take the right. You ask me to stop here, okay, I stop. Because your, your, because your up line, your mentor, they would want to see your success only. This is not corporate world. Corporate is different. Corporate, your, your boss will not tell you anything. Your boss will keep something to himself. Because if you know everything, you're going to become his boss. And he doesn't want it to happen, right? So, in Yusana, it's very different. In Yusana, your mentors, your leaders will tell you everything they know. Because if one day you succeed, they become more successful. So, you stick to what works. And you listen to them. Don't create new things. If you really have new ideas, don't do it first share with your mentors and ask them what do you think about this idea do you think it can we can try this so if he tells you that oh i think yeah sounds great we can give it a shot then do it together if he say uh, i've already tried this before it doesn't work then it doesn't work now finish game over move on so a lot of people they fail in the business not because they are they don't have the skill set but they fail in the business because they have too much of their own thoughts that they cannot empty and that's why they get stuck. So the most important thing is to attend all the trainings. Which is, which is great because all of you here are coming for training. So training is really, really important. Some people tell me, I know about this training I've been to, I've, I've been to the same topic before already. I know already. Do you have such people? Yes, yes right. Ah, this topic, huh? orientation again, ah, ayo, I start how many times already? Right? Uh, all the topics I've been to this many, many times, so I don't want to come for it. But I must understand, the training from different speaker, the training every single time you have different takeaway. Because you don't know who will say just one word that can change your life and your perspective. So don't miss any single training. Alright? So the second thing that I want to share with you is how to make millennials stay in the business. So it's not about how fast you can recruit, but it's about 
how you can make them stay in business, especially true for millennials. Because like I tell you, millennials, they are like time bomb. Huh? They come into your business, huh? they are time bomb. You don't know where they will explode, okay? It's a surprise. So sometimes they come in, they are very excited, you know, and you feel like, wow, I found my young diamond. And then you spend time to groom them, to teach them everything. And then after two months, eh, you suddenly don't hear any news from them. Huh? <laughs> well, you are laughing, right? Because it's, you all experience this, right? And then I, I'm so used to it now. That I really, when I see blue tick, no response for two days, I know this one is already, already. <laughs> Preparing to go to the CPR again. <laughs> so millennials, right? They have a problem. Their attention span is very, very short. So, how do we keep them active in the business? So millennials also, they are a group of people that they are not just looking for money. If you realize that a lot of them, they are not just there looking for becoming rich or have, becoming a millionaire. A lot of them are looking for other things. For example, recognition. Looking for friends. Looking for a place that they can feel belonged. So millennials, they want other things except for just money. So there are a few ways to create sense of belonging. Of course, I, I believe all of this you are really be doing. Number one, home meetings. So some of you, right, you have, I mean, you have a lot of different things in Philippines, right? But a lot of things are very big. So try to scale down to small group meetings that you can do on every weekend basis or different kind of small group meetings because some people are very, very shy. Especially millennials, a lot of them are quite shy. So if you want to make them open to stand on a platform or stand in front to talk to a group of people, you need to give them small stage. You cannot just tell them that, oh, today we have 200 people, come and share your story. You know, 200. They come out here, they forget their name already. Right now. Hi, I am, uh, who I am, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So you need to give them, you need to give them small stage, small control. And then from there, they will slowly grow and they will get confident, confi confidence, more and more. And as they get more and more confident, that's when they will come in and say that, I think I'm a leader now. I want to take charge of bigger roles. I want to grow. So you need to really understand. Home meetings are a place to duplicate leaders. You need to do your home meetings at least once a week. If you can, twice a week with your small group. In your team, the more home meetings you have everywhere in Philippines, the faster business will grow. Because then you start to grow leaders and start to duplicate and they become independent. That's when you can have your time freedom. Right? So that's very important. Number two is that you need to inject fun factor. This one I think quite simple, right? Because I think you guys in the Philippines, you are very fun. You are very crazy with your ideas and all this. So this one I will just, I will skip this because I think we all know fun factor. Just make it fun. Think of ways to make it fun. For example, Halloween is coming. You can do a Halloween party for your, for your millennial thing, right? Okay, this one, go pick on personal development. So a lot of young people, right, like I said, they are not just looking for money but they are also looking for a place for them to grow in their personal development component. So make sure that they are always learning new things, they are given roles in the team, they are given stage for them to share. When they start to grow, they will start to know that they have transformed into a different person and that's when they will be more, meaning, more keen to stay in your team. And the last part, this one I have to say, you have to for these young people, you sometimes have to be their parents. Right? And you have to be their, I say, aunt agony. Eh? If a relationship problem, also your problem. Uh, it really, you know, sometimes in my team, some people, they are just suddenly, suddenly not motivated. And I don't know why, so I, I, I text them, no, no reply. Then I will have to take them out, have coffee with them, one on one. I say, so how are you recently? So it's not always about Yusana. Because if you always just talk about Yusana, 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 for the young people, they feel, they feel that, oh, your intention to meet me is because of Yusana. You don't care for me. You don't love me. You know, they are like that. Yes, yes right. So young people, are, I, I thought I am very young, but I realized that I'm not young. They are very young. 
they have a lot of funny mindsets. So you really, really need to be there for them and you need to be there to inject love, inject care for them and to make them feel that they are wanted. Make them feel that you are here listening to them, not just wanting them to get their PPS or wanting to get their swimmer director. You need to love them first. When you love them, right, then they will respect and love you back. And that's when they listen to you. Okay? Okay, the, the, the last part, because I want to save more time for Q&A. That's why I'm going so fast. The last part I want to talk about is on branding, which I'll also illustrate um, and share more on the business I made on Sunday. So I'll touch a bit more on this. So in today's world, right, your summer business, right, is about what? Attraction. So people nowadays are very smart. You don't really have to explain much about Yusana products or Yusana company. They can easily go and Google it. What? Do they really need you to go through everything? Maybe not. So how are you going to attract these people to your team? It all boils down to branding. And what is branding? Branding is what people talk about you when you're not in the room. That is branding. So think about that. When you're out of, people don't tell you what they want to know about you in front of you. But when you leave this room, they will say, oh, you know, ah, that is when you know that what kind of image, what kind of branding you have created for people around you, right? So branding, it depends on what you want your team to be like and what you want to focus on. So everybody has different kind of focus, different kind of direction. So in my team, um, this is uh, one of the pictures, okay? So in our team, we have a few focus and one of the key focus that I focus on for my team is on fitness. So some of you have followed me on Instagram, you know that I exercise a lot, right? Yeah, so, and I realized that while exercising, I was able to attract people of the same mindset. People who are also into fitness, people who are also into keeping themselves in good shape. So branding is very important. And branding, you have to make sure that they can be seen and communicated via your social media. So I believe everybody here, you have social media, right? Yes. yes. So how are you making use of your social media to reach out to people? And people who are maybe your friends and maybe the bigger market which are not your friends, your strangers. So how are you going to reach out to people who are strangers but yet when they look at your profile on Facebook, on Instagram and they are drawn to you and they want to follow you. You know people's attention span is very short nowadays, right? People attention span, especially on Instagram. Instagram is very, very focused on pictures. So people don't even look at your content. So sometimes I, I did experiments before. So I posted a picture that is very nice, but content I write one sentence. Some pictures I post is just a normal picture, but I write a very inspiring content. Guess which one received more likes? Picture, right? So we live in a very, very sad world. It's very superficial, right? So I write a very, I took time and effort to write a very good content. But I asked my downline, because she liked my, that picture, I said, hey, you and my content was very good, right? She said, huh? I didn't read. I said, you like, I said, you like the picture, but you don't read my content. And she said, no need to read, wow, just like, huh? it's a nice picture, right? I said, you have to read my content. So you realize that nowadays on social media is really about the pictures and really about the branding. So this is also another big, big training topic on social media, right? So I realized that recently when I started, I started with millennials, right? They are more focused on Instagram than on Facebook. So sad to say for all those people who are very active on Facebook, that Facebook is officially for people who are a little bit older. <laughs> The millennials are all, I'm not sure for Philippines, but the millennials in Singapore are all on Instagram. And Instagram is only something that I started to pick up, I would say, maybe just last year. I started to really curate my posts and purposefully post things that I want to be seen. Last time it was just random things. So you can tell if an account is curated or an account is just random things. Today I want to post a bowl of noodle, I post noodle. Oh, you post a noodle for what? Who wants to see your noodle? You know, it doesn't really add to a business, right? So if you post today, I ate a bowl of, uh, I don't know what's the favorite food in Philippines. What was it? Huh? Adobe? 
a d o b o 啊。哦 ，OK， 但是有 post a picture of a bowl of a d o b o and say, oh, today I had this for lunch. And then, you know what? You're gonna get out of it. So actually, everything on social media that you're posting, right, has a purpose, has a reason. So you have to be very intentional when you are posting things online. Some people are very upset with a certain situation on that day, and out of frustration and anger, they post it on Insta Story or Facebook or whatever. Remember, this kind of things. Even if you post it and you take it down, some people will still screenshot you. Okay. So nowadays, I always tell my team, I say, don't post anything that you want to be screenshot. So I will sometimes I will look at my teammates their posts and some posts are really inappropriate. I will say, hey, please take it down. This this is very inappropriate. And they say, how oh, really? I say, yeah, it's really inappropriate. So you want to portray yourself as a certain brand that people look at you, they are inspired by you, and they want to be like you. The key sentence here is, your prospects out there want to be like you, and that's when they want to be like you. They look at whatever you're posting and they are inspired, and when they're inspired, be it. The way you look, be it the things you write, be it that you have fun with your team, it can be anything. But as long as they look at your profile and they feel like, wow, this is an inspiration, then they will start to follow. They observe a bit more, and then one day they will text you, and you will constantly have people to text you and asking you about what do you do. So that was why I realized that when I started to be intentional about my posts. Uh, one year ago on Instagram, I started to receive a lot of people who text me and asking me about what I do. Because if you realize on my Instagram, I'm not very, I'm not very uh, fully full on on Yusana. It's not like every day I post Yusana prophecy fish oil. Ah, s e l f e n t i a l If you post, some people also post a lot of product, product, right? So if you post much of such things, right, people will see lifestyle. You want to see a full picture, a wholesome view, not just what product you take. So it has got to do with your own personal branding. So the important things is that you have to also equip your team with branding on how they do it online. So this is going to be a very, very important topic. Now, now it's picking up, but you can see from now onwards in the future, the years to come, right? How you manage your social media account. How you brand yourself online is going to make a major impact on how you can attract your u s a n a business. Okay, so of course, law of attraction works the best, and also make sure that they see the things that they want to see, the results they want to see. All right. So with that, uh, I've ended on my part. So I'm open to questions now because I know that you guys have a lot of questions, and I want to save time for questions out there that you have. To ask for me, don't be shy. Just ask me anything. Anyone have any questions to ask? Okay, the floor is now open for questions from Miss Ted and Song. Amaria, we have one. We already have one uh, brave soul here to ask the first question. Don't be shy. Don't ask, ask more questions, you know. Hi Helen, I'm uh, actually preparing for this moment to ask you a question <laughs> uh, because I'm. Are you going to do a dance? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'm Jola Abelia, Goal Director from uh, Cebu. Uh, for uh, we see you in your social social media so uh, successful, but we know that there's behind the scenes. So, can you tell us what is uh, the usual day of Helen Song? Okay, his okay. Her question is ah, uh, usual day now or usual day when I when I just started? It's very different. Now, I think started ah. Uh. Okay, why I talk about both? Uh. Okay. When I just started in Yusana, right? My usual day, because I was full time in Yusana since day one, so my usual day, my schedule, like on a daily basis, is that I take about five to six appointments on a daily basis. So I have about morning, I have one. So I wake up and then I start to make appointments. Morning appointment, lunch, noon time, dinner, nine o'clock, and even until twelve o'clock. So every day is very packed. Yeah. So actually, my life was pretty boring. <laughs> in the beginning of my personal business, it's just really all about meeting people and meeting my team, trainings and all these things. Repeated, repeated, repeated. But now, of course, is a I mean, if you follow me, you know right now. Now I'm not so busy. Now every morning I will work out, so I I try to have time to work out every morning. So I work out about five times a week, 
to six times a week. So morning, and then I will start my day working days working hours from twelve to six. Yeah. So for me now it's about twelve to six, and then at night it could be trainings. Does that answer your question? Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Helen, for answering the question very, um, uh, in a very personal way that a lot of them can relate, I'm sure. Maria? Any more questions from the crowd? Yes, we have the lady in yellow. Hi, Helen. Hi. I'm Leigh from Batangas. I'm one of the board directors of Isana Philippines. So actually, I've met you a lot of times, and it's always nice and welcoming, and I would like to personally thank you for that. So my question is, um, to my understanding, when you joined your mom in the business, she was already a diamond director, right? Master. Master diamond director. So when you joined, what were the mindset and the skills that you knew then that you had to learn fast so that you can run along with her doing the business? Okay, good question. So for me, right, when I joined a business, uh, my mom was already a one star diamond director. So some people tell me that I'm very lucky. But I tell you the honest truth, it's very stressful. Because when I joined the account with her, I still remember, and this is a true story, I still remember at that time, some of the Philly, uh, leaders from the Philippines are expanding the market in Singapore. Yeah. And some of them are Ruby directors, Emma directors. And I was one star diamond director by name. But I just started, but by joint account, I'm one star, but by experience, I'm not. So the management in Singapore told me, hey, Helen, there is this uh, uh, annual director from Philippines coming to Singapore. Why not you meet, meet him to learn more? And then so I met this person to learn more, right? And then the person was like, oh, but you are one star and you want to learn from me? I'm only admiral. So at the moment, actually, a lot of the moments in the beginning, it's very stressful for me. So a lot of people tell me I'm very lucky. Like, I'm issued like I'm lucky, but at the same time, I feel very stressed, which is why I think my success was faster because I was so stressed that I knew I had to really, really prove myself. I had no choice because at that time, in my mom's team, a lot of the diamond directors were called that. Like, you know how they call me? Whenever I come to office, they say, hey, hello, little diamond. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they call me the little diamond, you know? Yeah, and then I'm like, uh, no. but actually my mom I'm thinking, why am I that little diamond? <laughs> so it, it's, it's really stressful and a lot of people at that time, they were just betting on when I will quit. Because uh, a lot of my friends and also a lot of the people in the team, they know that I'm very, I led a very comfortable life. They knew that, they felt that I couldn't, I couldn't last the challenges that you sometimes will give me. So I felt that at that time, I was really, one, I was very, very um, eager to prove myself. The second thing, I was working really, really hard because I know that I need to grow faster because I have a rank, a name there that I have to match up with, you know. And the third thing is because at that time, my mom's, my mom's team, my mom's side is a lot older. It's in their about 40s and 50s. And they're all Chinese speaking. But my network and the people that I want to build are the Gen Ys. So they are English speaking living in Singapore and in the 20s. So I could, to be honest, I could not leverage anything from her because the PowerPoint was in Chinese, the trainees was in Chinese, and the crowd was all a lot older. So I had to start everything from, from scratch. And that time I even told my mom, because at that time the Philippines team was growing a lot in Singapore. I told my mom, I said, hey mommy, can I join the Philippines team? <laughs> because they already got training, they already got PowerPoint. I joined them, then she said, no, it doesn't work this way. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so for me, it really, it, it was a lot of hard work. So for my first two years, it was really, really very, very intense. Thank you. Hi, Helen. I'm Nina from Makati. <laughs> uh, my question is, um, um, all through your years in Yazana and with the, uh, being the legacy of uh, your mom, uh, what is your, what do you consider your greatest challenge in Yazana and how did you overcome? Okay. That you almost quit like... <laughs> oh, okay. 
honestly, uh, I almost quit a lot of times. And that is something that is really common. Sometimes people think that, oh, a person who has succeeded means that they are really strong, they might not have wanted to quit. I can tell you, in everybody's journey, is exactly the same. I have in many, many moments in my personal business where I wanted to quit. But I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to say that somehow, some people, my mentor, my mom, or people with the team, within the team and the management, put me back. So I really think you are very blessed if you have someone beside you or in your team who's always pulling you back when you want to quit. It's very, very important. So if you have someone beside you, your upline or whoever, give him or her a hug. If you have, okay, please hug them. So don't always... And hey, don't cry. Uh. Don't always feel that they are naggy, you know. Don't always feel that they are naggy and they are always like telling you things. But I can tell you, in times of challenge, these are the people that will pull you back and hold you there so that you don't quit. But for me, what I've learned is, uh, the bit to me, a lot of things can happen when you're building your Sana business. And at different stage of your Sana business, right, you're going to have different kind of problems. You're going to face different magnitude of problems. In the beginning, you're going to deal with very small issues. To me, it's so small. Some issues, they're like, just people, I still don't want to cry, cry, nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So some, 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 some people in the business, right, in the beginning, right, very small challenge, like, you want to prospect people, but nobody going to join you. Oh, you feel very sad, right? You want to quit, right? But after a while, it's a lot more than that. Sometimes I feel that the biggest challenge, to me, to answer your question, the biggest challenge when you are thinking of quitting is when you have spent a lot of effort and time to mentor somebody and that somebody decides to let you go or let himself or herself go. I think in our business, I think in Yusana business, that is, to me, the hardest to deal with. Someone that you have spent a long time to groom and invested time, energy, love on a person but after that, they decided to not do the business. So uh, to me, that is something that is really, really hard. Other things are just very small. Everything is seasonal in the business. Yes. So as long as you just bite your teeth a bit harder, right? And just like, you know, just tolerate a bit longer, everything shall pass. And then the next season will be here, and then it will be better. As long as you are still in the game, you will succeed. Nobody can fail. You can only quit, right? So as long as you can succeed, people take one year, never mind, you take two years. Two years cannot, three years. Three years cannot, yeah, three, five years. You still can make it, right? So as long as you are still there, you can make it. Okay? Yes. Hi, I'm Lewis Kaljian. Uh, yeah, we actually have the same cultural background because um, most of my family members are actually also in Singapore. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, my question to you is, because um, in my team I have uh, mostly they're millennials, and in my experience, millennials are very full of stress, anxiety, and like burnout. And usually they're the people who has a uh, lot of part of life crisis issues and like existential crisis, right? But sometimes like, because um, you know, inside it's a business, right? So we have to keep on going. But sometimes those kinds of um, issues just um, gets out of the way. So how do you create a winning culture wherein your team, uh, I mean, most millennials have this kind of issues, but you still push on. Okay, yeah, he's right. So for the millennials, right, they do have a low, I would say, low tolerance for stress, and they are easily anxiety. And to be honest, a lot of millennials nowadays, in Singapore, I'm not sure if you can feel this, but in Singapore, there are a lot of millennials who are undergoing depression because of work and mostly from work. Yeah, I've encountered a few cases. So their ability to take stress is very low. So if you push them a bit too much, they start to break down and they cannot handle. So one way I find that for, for me and my team, because I do have a, I have a few groups of millennials here and there, I feel that it's very important, like just now I mentioned earlier on, it's very important for you to organize events or bonding things that we can come together as a family. So it's not just always about coming to training and listening about USANA related things, but you can organize small things that are very personal to them. For example, gather, gather me to the potluck, 
or for example you go out together on the street, things that bonds them together. So even so they feel that firstly they can trust you. So for millennials, trust is very important. Once they don't trust you, they will not stay in the business. So you need to <coughs> give them an environment where they can trust you and they will feel comfortable and open to share with you their problems. So that is the very important thing. Another thing I will always say is that people always ask me a question. I have this problem and that problem in my team and I have people this and that. I always say, I always say one thing that we should do to help with all these problems. Instead of always solving existing problems, which yes, we have to solve. But the one way to get out of all these problems, right, is to find new people. That's what I always do. Whenever I have a problem with the existing people, I feel the urgency to find new people. Because the new people have, have a few functions, okay? The new, the, why, sometimes, some people, right, you feel that you're very stressed because your existing group has given you this problem because you only have that few people to look at. And you're always looking at them. <laughs> and they get irritated by you. Because you always look at them and then they are like, oh my god, why are you me again and this and that. So they feel stressed, you feel stressed. So the important thing is to increase your own action plan and find more people. The new people into the business will be able to also create a new dynamics and influence in your existing bundle of people. And the second thing is when you create results in the new people, the old people will automatically move. You don't have to say anything. They look at them and say, wow, they came in later than me and they are really super director. Oh my god, I better work hard. Right? So it's always about finding new people. No matter what issues you have in your team, find new people. Even and today, I'm always finding new people. I go to the gym, I always target to talk to two people. Yeah. So every time I go to the gym while I'm doing the weights, how well I'm observing, okay? <laughs> I'm doing my weight, I'm like, oh, okay, maybe some things that I can post. <laughs> It's very simple. I target two of you, okay, no problem. I'll go back to you and say, hey, wow, oh, you look very fit, huh? You do come here often? So it's very simple if they if she reply you in a very aloof way, like, huh? Oh yeah. Then forget it, lah. Not interested in you also. You know, you don't have to care. But if she's like, oh yeah, come here, oh yeah, I, I saw you just now. Oh, you also look very fit. Ah prospect. Girls, huh? Because I prospect guys with it. In the gym, some more the guys do it. They say, hey, you look very fit. I mean, yeah, right? So, girls, they, ladies, I tell you, it's very easy to make new friends. You just go and praise her. I go and say, wow, hey, you're this, uh, this sports pants really nice, you know. Where do you get it from? Oh, straight away she say, oh, nice, ah. Uh. Oh, yeah, I should have got it from this website. Oh, then straight away you become best friends, ah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, that is my tip. So it's very easy. So for me, I never run out of people to talk to. Because every day, I always make new friends. And when you make new friends, uh, don't be creepy. It's not like you make new friends to say, Hey, uh, what do you do? Uh? Oh, hey, I'm doing this as uh, supplement uh, business. Uh. Oh, side income, they can earn the extra income. You want to earn extra income? <laughs> it is very creepy, okay? This one is, doesn't work, okay? So what you're doing is actually just making a new friend adding this person to your list of friends, I add them to Instagram because if you add them to your phone number, there's nothing much you can talk about. Okay, imagine I become a new friend, I say, hi, nice to meet you. Uh, that's it, right? The next time, how, what, what, what do I say? <laughs> Very weird, right? But if she's on my Instagram, when she posts Insta story, I will go and view. And then I will be like, oh, hey, nice, uh, nice ramen, where are you? Then another day, oh, new gym, which, which gym? Slowly we talk, and then one day she was here and doing, and she asked me, "Hey, I see that you're doing this a health business. So can you imagine if every day you add two people into your list? Uh, if you rest on weekends, you add five days times two. One week you have ten. One month you have forty. One year you have how many? Four hundred and uh, eight. Okay, count. Four hundred eighty, almost five hundred. So one year you will have five hundred new friends." Uh, in your list. So you will not be afraid that your your team will give you problems because you always have new people to feel like that. Alright? So I hope that helps. Yeah.
thank you very much. I will be able to use those tips. Um, my name is Marite. I have a Yusana baby. And I'm just curious if uh, I actually have two questions. This is the first question. Uh, what do you think helps?